it's transportation. It's like everything else. It's mm -hmm. taken, like right now, it's taken for granted until you need it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was supply right. chain. Nobody even knew what supply chain was before COVID happened. Right. Yeah. Now it was, a, <laughs> well, okay, look, look back to COVID. Every night on the news, it was supply chain. Mm -hmm. Every channel, supply chain, supply yep. chain, supply chain. Okay. We, we have that on the news every night. And during COVID, every truck driver was a hero. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it without you. We appreciate you so much. Whole nine yards. Now we're, you know, we're away from it. Don't see anybody talking about heroes. No. <laughs> okay. And you don't hear anything about supply chain. <laughs> You're not hearing a while. word about it. So to me, it's like the market is at the bottom now, right? We're at a... Volumes, shipping volumes are down across the board. Industries are hurting. Banking industry's hurting. Building industry's hurting. Interest rates are up. Cost of doing business is up. We're at a 12 year high on bankruptcies. 12 year record this year so far on bankruptcies. And, and you look back and you, and you see people making the same mistakes they had made previous to it. it is, is everyone's memory or the majority of people's memory this short? Yes. It, it is. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for clarifying that for <laughs> me because I was looking for a sounding board that would say, you know, look at the banking, the bank in California that went, went up. Uh, you know, they, everybody on their boards, interest rates could go up, right? I mean, yes. you know. Yes, we knew this was going to happen. Exactly. We saw it. We prepared for it. We planned for it because we know the ebbs and flows of the industry. I, let's say I do business with a shipper and they give me 20 loads a week. Okay. Whatever it is. We'll just do that for an example. During COVID, I did 60 or 80 loads a week for them because the, the other providers were failing. And most of those were short notice, same day picks, right? Get us out of the fire you're not set up to be successful in that scenario. So they get their 20 contract shipments, and if they need more, we'll step up and help you. If we would have done this right from the beginning, we wouldn't have that, right? So now, all the people that fail to keep their agreements and uphold their commitments, they all wanna come back and quote unsustainably low numbers. And they're entertained. You know, it's like, yes. if you put your hand on the stove and it's hot, do you go back and do it again and again? Yes, they do. Uh, it, you know, strategic, uh, I'm going to question uh, any business model that where they say they're strategic and they want partners, but they want lowest cost. There's a, there's a balance. There's a value. And any company that does not have deductions for late deliveries, et cetera, bucketed to go and get back against transportation and even at a lane level, they don't know whether they're saving money or losing money as an organization. Because one side can show a profit and the other side can show a bleed. Yes. You know, there's that whole, there's the whole bucket of, um, uh, you know, the surcharges that you need to budget for every year because you're not going to get 100% OTIF all the time. And if you have a customer that finds you for that, you need to plan on that. The market is too volatile. The supply chain is still too volatile. The labor market is still too volatile. You're not looking past the tip of your nose. So what was really difficult was budgeting for COVID. Oh, that just went out the window. I, right. I mean, you really just might as well just drink a fifth of whiskey and try to hit a dartboard. I mean, that's just about as good as you're going to get. <laughs> Put a blindfold on in the dark. Yeah, you know, you're just, you're not going to be successful. And and there was no one in their right mind that would think that we could be. I mean, the way that we started the pandemic and then how, it, how it's, you know, sort of finished or wrapped up are completely two different environments. So, again, I, I do believe in, in looking for budgets. I do believe in focusing that way, but you gotta be pragmatic about what the market is doing. And it doesn't matter, matter if it's a pandemic or a natural disaster or something else going on. You have to leave 
you have to leave room for that stuff in your budget. And hey, if you, you know, if you don't, you know, if you make your budget or beat it because that stuff didn't happen, good for you. That's great. But it's it's not padding. It's being realistic in an industry that's been volatile for the last twenty years. Right. It just has been. If you're a shipper or uh, an organization, what advice would you have? Uh, because I th I think repetitively we've seen this industry become more volatile. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, to be successful, it takes relationships. It does. You can throw money at it but you're not gonna have the service level and the people involved that you would like. In most instances, if, if they had strong partnerships strategically, then your liability goes way down exponentially also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, personally, I, you know, I do an analysis. Uh, it does take me a bit of time um, looking at what has happened that typically don't go more than two quarters because like I said, the last 20 years has been insane. Collaborate with my partners on what they're seeing in the industry. Um, I look at the, the customer service bill rates. What do I need to expect from there? What kind of projects may influence that fill rate that are coming up in next year? You know, it's, it's not just a, Hey, let's look at what we spent and add six percent. You know, that's not it. And there's just a lot of analysis that you need to do in order to get that a good, decent projection. There have been years I've been pretty close, and there have been years that I could, I, you know, blew it out of the water just because, you know, who knew what was going to happen in Vancouver with all that flooding? That was insane, um, and what that did to the rest of the supply chain. So, um, there's just some things you can predict. There are some things you can't, but. Um, you know, just like when we bid a project, you, we put in contingency fees. I just think transportation is one of those that we got to build in contingency because it's so volatile. Well, Wendy, I, I can't thank you enough for your wisdom. Uh, I, I've missed having you on lately. Uh, welcome back from all of us. And I, I think you bring a real but an intelligent and a relatable approach to all of our listeners. Uh, I think when, when you get into the, the cost scenario, you know, kind of wagging the dog, when, when, that's, the, when that's the first and foremost goal, uh, you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that there, uh, of course, cost is a part of it, but I think it's a value. When you start looking at deductions, lost time to try and fight and figure out deductions, uh, you know, well, no fight in the Walmarts of the world is a losing proposition. Yep. So yeah. Just so avoid it all together. <laughs> don't put yourself in that position is the, is the smartest thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't drink and get in the car. Mm -hmm. You just. I mean, that's why they do it that way. They they want you to they want you to position yourself to prevent that from even happening. Right. And everybody thinks that they can do it and still be really cheap, and you just can't do it. No. No, and when you get a three-day delivery window and the first two days there's no appointments available, it's yeah. effectively a one-day delivery window. Mm -hmm. Don't put three stops on it for one pallet apiece and then 20 pallets <laughs> goes to the third stop because one of those three stops, more than likely in our industry, will hold it up. These aren't things that rational, realistic people do, mm -hmm. but we're I mean, seeing it. You know, it's important that you know your carrier. It's important that you know the lane. It's important you know what's going on in the area, but it's also important that you know your customer. And I don't mean the customer that you deal with when you're making these arrangements. I mean the distribution center. Right. You know, what's going on there? You, I mean, there were there have been times when I knew where that person was going, he was gonna get held up. I just needed a plan on it. Yep. Just so knew. If, if you send us that order with four stops and and the majority of it we see is this one that we know is going to be a problem if we're five minutes late. Yep. Let's move that one up to the first stop and deliver the rest the next day. Yep. Even if it costs you a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you just saved me about 600 in OTIF fine. So I'm or more. Bucks. It, I'm good. <laughs>
Right. So either be stronger on the agreement side from a sales perspective to set your transportation people up for success is, as I think, a, another part of this. Because if your salespeople get compensated at, at a case level, right, sell cases, and they're not accountable for that, then the liability all goes to transportation. Yeah. Right? Well, it's it's... Transportation is a lot more complicated than what it used to be. And it does take someone who is trained, well-informed, and knows, knows the triggers that they need to manage towards. And I just think that's what's missing in a lot of uh, my experience so far, you know, engaging with different people or different associates that I spend a lot of time teaching them uh, the nuances of stuff that you don't get in a textbook. Right. You know, the, the nuances of how you route something. So, cause you know, that distribution point's going to hold you up or, you know, how you watch your hours of service so that you don't create other delays and uh, making sure that as a shipper that I am turning that truck, because, you know, it may not affect me right away, but if I'm a slow shipper, it's going to get out and it's going to affect me later. So, yeah, those um, reviews, they're, yeah, they're, reviews everybody are gets them. The drivers, they're connected, they're networked. You know, it's really foolish of anyone to think that these guys don't have their ducks in a row. You're talking about their money. They got their ducks in a row. And there are a lot of times as a shipper, we can't even find our ducks. So I think that we have to notice that, you know, hey, we we need to be we need to be prepared to go into these relationships so that we're playing on even fields. And I just, I don't, historically, I just haven't seen that recently. It's been a while. Well, I think that that's based on need. I think what will happen, you don't hear anybody talking about sustainability, right? Yeah. Now. Nobody's, that, that term is, that's years ago, right? <laughs> we for, forgot how we got here and what put us in this position and as an industry, and we're not gonna get out of it unless strong leadership comes out and says, this is, this is what we need from a model perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it takes the same on our side. Yep. The, the number of carriers and brokers that have gone out of business already this year is astonishing. And, uh, and unfortunately, although we don't want to see people go out of business, they're not used to the, the industry ebbs and flows. And they're not maybe set up. A lot of people got into our industry in the past few years and thought, you know, we're going to make a, make a bunch of money. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, I think that's going to filter itself out over a period of time. It will. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, it's not, it's proving to not take that long, which in retrospect may also impact and push freight rates up sooner than later too. Mm -hmm. So supply versus demand, but how do, how do you build a consistent supply chain in a business model if you're looking to go low cost and get back? Can't be done you're going to be in the same exact position again. So, yeah. Wendy, love having you on. Thanks for the time again. Yeah. Uh, next time we have to have you in the office. we got to get you in here. Yeah, it's uh, been a minute. I saw BJ yeah. walk by a few minutes ago. Yep, yeah, it's the same old gang here. Not a lot of change. <laughs> um, you know, we're growing, but uh, strategic. Not short-sighted. Very good. So, thanks for the time. All right. Talk to you soon. Anyone else watching, please share any thoughts or comments. Have a great day.